Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I am getting started on my next journal today. Um, I just sort of, it's early morning and I decided I would just maybe do some searching around in the studio and decide what to work on today. So um, I've kind of come up with a couple ideas and I often just kind of go through my books and decide like what kind of journal do I feel like making? <laughs> how's how's uh, my brain working today? So um, if you watched my video from last week, I had picked up this book in a thrift haul. Um, it's called Dear Millie and it's a grim story and this particular copy has been illustrated uh, by Maurice Sendak. Um, and so I got really inspired by it. The illustrations are amazing and I think it's what I'm going to go with. Um, so this is going to be one of those journals where I, I use the illustrations and some of the pages from the book to sort of carry the story line through the book. And um, so I chose a book that I want to use because this is the cover. Um, I just got started this morning before I turned the camera on and then I was like, I should just turn on the camera and kind of show people where I'm going with this. Um, so this kind of calm pinky mauve color, it is it just, this book particularly just really resonated with me. It, these colors are just these soft colors and I thought it would be a really nice um, book to kind of pair with it. So this book was called um, Map and Something and it's a 90s book, it's not old, but it had this beautiful um, cover and it has these fish on it, but they're kind of, um, I don't know, they don't inspire me a whole lot, but I do love the way this looks. So I want to keep the scrolling at the bottom. So this morning, um, I pulled out the, the innards of the book and, um, I stitched down on top of the book title, this beautiful piece of nice vintage, um, trim that's floral trim and it's just really pretty and I thought it'd be a kind of a nice thing to have on the outside and I'll do the binding over top of all of that um, but for now I have a couple ideas about what I want to do with this from the book cover so I want it to sit sort of right there so it covers up like the fish um, that goes away but I get to keep the rest of the that fun like scrolling at the bottom and I'm going to position it about right there and I think I do want to pop a, an eyelet through here too. Um, I have some eyelets that'll be perfect for this book I think. I'm probably going to use this this brassy tone so because it will go with that so I think that's what I'll do but I first wanted to do a bit of an experiment too to see I'm thinking this holographic embossing powder would be really cool on, on top of this, but I want to test it first to see how, in fact, it will look. Like, I don't want it to, you know, make the, the whole picture go away. So I'm going to test that. Um, so I'll just move these out of the way for a minute. First, there's a couple things that I want to do. I want to add some layering around the outside of this. Um, image. So first I'm going to use the Tattered Rose from Tim Holtz because it's like the perfect kind of color to just ink a little bit of a border here. Okay, so I'm awake this morning before everybody else in the house. And my dog, if you hear him barking, it's because he's grumpy with me because I'm not hanging out with him. He's upstairs. Um, but you have to steal studio time when you can get it, right? So I'll see my dog later. <laughs> there he goes. That's good. And then I also was thinking of doing a little bit of um, just gilding on this around the edges or possibly on this, this frame here. Um, I'm thinking on the frame would be kind of cool. So I'm going to get this open. I've not opened this bottle in forever. Oh my goodness. This liquid leaf and it can be a real tricky thing to open. Let's give it a little shake here. Oh, giving my hand a workout this morning. Okay. There we go. You need to be stirred. Yes, you do. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, shaking everything here. <laughs> there we go. That 
that's better. Perfect. Okay. So, do I put some on the edge or just on the frame? Oh goodness, I think maybe just the frame. So, let's just make sure it's not going to go on too thick. This is a little bit of careful work here. Those rare times where I need to color inside the lines. <laughs> Just kind of want to make it like kind of gold brushed. We had a really nice day yesterday with friends. Um, I'm thankful to be able to hang out with my friends a little bit before the end of summer. Had a really nice lunch. Um, they grilled beautiful salmon on cedar planks. It was really yummy. And um, I made a potato salad because I don't know why I love making potato salad. So when my friend said that he wanted potato salad, I was like, I'll make it because it was really nice to get to make potato salad and also to get to eat it. I don't get to eat like carby, carby foods very often, but when I do, I do uh, enjoy it. And they got me a lovely birthday gift because they're like super nice. And um, my friend gave me a beautiful painting. She paints these amazing, she's a watercolor artist, but she's been working in acrylics lately. And I mean, I guess I shouldn't limit her by saying she's a watercolor artist. She works in all sorts of mediums. Um, she also does a lot of nice collage work and bullet journaling and um, she made me a beautiful painting. I should share it. Maybe I'll share it in my weekly wrap-up, actually. It's gorgeous. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Just a little kind of light gilding just to kind of bring out this nice border here. And I was thinking of doing the edges, too, but I don't know if I should. I kind of like the pink, the tattered rose put on there. So I think I might leave that alone, actually. Yeah, I'm going to leave it. Um, yeah. Okay, so give me two seconds. I'm just going to clean my brush. This this um, liquid leaf does not like to be left alone. <laughs> it will, it will uh, annihilate the brush. So I'll be right back. Hold tight. Okay, we're back. So there we go. That has been... Um, gilded around the frame. Um, so now I'm going to find something um, either from the book or like the book that I can test this on. And I think I might use that actually. So this is from the outer edges of the of the book and I think I'm going to use um, some of it to make like a little tag but I can actually just spare this little bit here to just test what I want to test um, so let me grab my okay So we'll try the holographic one. I also have a clear one, but I wanted to try the holographic first because I thought that'd be kind of fun to make this holographic. There we go. 
haven't even opened this yet. <laughs> okay. these sparkles back in here hopefully okay most of it's back in there <laughs> I don't have one of those like tray things that people have um, okay where is my let me just move this out of the way for a minute and it's here I just have to grab my heat gun. Which is here, and if I'm lucky, it's already plugged in. Yes, I think it is. Okay. Okay. All right, a little bit of noise from the heat gun in two seconds once I plug it in. <laughs> it's not plugged in. No. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look. Oh yeah, I'm definitely seeing it holographic. Okay. How does it change the texture? Actually, I like how it feels. Yeah, and you can see the holographic aspect to it. <clears throat> and it kind of brings the lines out a little more too. So I think that's a winner. I think we will do that. That feels good. Okay, let's do it. So I think I need a bigger, bigger piece of paper. Um, just use a regular piece of paper here. Scrap paper over here.
Ah, okay. <laughs> so I just wanted to not, not breathe and blow too much of this around. Okay. Now... I'm actually going to pause and finish this. I'll be right back. Hey, there we are. So hopefully you can see that this is now iridescent. Um, it's really lovely. So I came to the realization when I was doing this <clears throat> that if you go too, too close with too much heat, you will lose the sparkly iridescence. So um, I just kind of did another test while I was doing this because I felt like the first one wasn't as iridescent as I'd hoped, but this one really is. So now we're good. <laughs> That's the best thing you can do when you're making things and you're trying something new for the first time. Do a lot of tests first to just make sure that what you're doing, you're getting the result you expect. <laughs> so put this away and then I'll grab my book <clears throat> get rid of that let's get any remaining glitter out of here <laughs> okay so then that will sit like this I think yeah right like that okay yay I'm really happy about that with the iridescence it's great um so I think what I want to do is I first I'm going to glue this down on something a little stronger because um, <clears throat> I want a little bit of thickness anyhow because I think I'm going to put like little gold brads to uh, affix it in place. So let's put all the embossing stuff away. I need some some packaging paper would be good for this some cardstock from this okay so then I'm going to just set this aside and find my glue there it is pretty well stuck but I think I still want to go in with a little bit of art glitter glue around the edges before I like hold them down um, just because Let's spread that around here Very sticky. <laughs> Probably do two edges on this one because I don't think this art glitter glue will let me lift it for too much longer. <laughs> it is a very sticky glue.
And I don't think I'm going to stitch around this one. Because I just don't want to impact the prettiness of the, the sparkle. Of that iridescent sparkle. I hope you can see how iridescent this is. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> but I'm now going to just get it cut off of this packaging. Because it's probably hard to see how lovely it is until I do that. <laughs> but this will just give it a little bit more stiffness. Love this so much. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's good. How so? I think actually I could probably get away with doing that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so now I need to glue this on. I'm going to do so with art glitter glue, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to put some uh, brads through it as well in the corners because I just really love how that looks. <laughs> Intensity. Okay, now I need my, I need a wipe. Just wipe away any excess glue that I know is probably going to come out of the side here. Just being prepared for it. And all you're seeing is a little bit of liquid from um, a crafter's wipe right now. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't have excess glue blob everywhere. But that will all go away. It's just water. Okay. I'm just going to do one more little clean around just to make sure we got all the excess glue. Even though it dries clear, I just don't want the, the shininess on the book itself. There we go. Okay. So now that's that and we'll just let that dry. Um, yay. Can you see how iridescent that is? I hope so. <laughs> the camera can be a little weird, so I don't know, but oh my goodness, I love it. All right, so I'm just gonna let that rest. 
And now I have to decide um, how I'm going to use this book. So the size of the spine is just a little bit over an inch and I'm thinking about putting four signatures in it. Um, <clears throat> go. Sorry, just tidying up a little here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just tear the pages here out of this book spine. This book, this book I'm thinking I want to use for something. Um, maybe, you know, it would be nice, a writing board for this book. And that could be the back and then I'll make the front nice. That's a plan. Though it is going to require me to do some hard work <laughs> of cutting it down to size. That's okay though. So, um, this, I like the color of these papers. So I'm probably going to try to keep some of it intact. Let's just see where, how it's tied together here. So I'll pull that out. I'll break the strings. The original book binding. Okay, so that one isn't attached, it's just glued on. But I'm going to use that page inside as a signature um, page. <clears throat> so then I decided a bit ago, I wanted, when I was deciding to go with this book as the book for this story, I decided I want to use this, this story as like, sort of the beginning of the story. So <clears throat> I need to see how big is my book in comparison to these pages. Okay, so pages are a little bit bigger and using a single one folded, um, I can do that with this one actually, that's fine. How would that fit into the book? Okay, so we'd have about an inch, not quite an inch. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. So I can I can use these individually or <clears throat> as a folded set of pages. So I think what I want to do with this one is um, just separate it from this, and that will be the center of the first signature that has this story. I was thinking at first at just cutting it out and folding it and um, maybe inking it up and putting it like in a front pocket in the journal. And I'm, I guess I'm still undecided if I should do that or if I should use it as the center of the first signature. Um, I could also tie it in as its own little signature in the front, but I don't know. It's worth thought. We'll think about it. These, okay, so that's going to be a page. This is just going to be paper. And now we can go through the rest of the book and find how the signatures go together here. <clears throat> Here's the center. We'll pull this up. So because there will be four signatures, I think I'll want to use like four pages of this book as actual signatures. <clears throat> and that could be a really beautiful um, center spread. Yeah, I think I will keep that and I'll do like a fold in at least on this one side so that we have that as a center spread. So I'll keep that one as a signature. Then this one can go to ephemera. This one, um, ephemera, I think, yeah. Signature. Oh wow, there we go. There's another signature for sure. 
So, but they're not, they don't, oh, they're not together. Okay, that's okay. So, that one will be a signature, and then I need one more. Oops. Okay, that'll be for ephemera. Are these finally all cut, all of these strings? <laughs> Okay, like that one, ephemera. Another of these pink pages that'll go in as a signature. Okay. Okay, okay, what do we want to do? So, those will all be for ephemera. These will be pages. And then this will be, so that will be one piece as a center spread. So it's going to be needed as for one signature. Then this one, um, I think I'll use this as signature two. So that'll go to ephemera. I'm going to have to sort through how I want to do this because <laughs> so i got to think about what the pages look like folded. So I think signature, signature, signature. So that's three. And then I need one more that I would like as a signature. This one, if I folded it, I think would we fold the dog in half? Yeah, we don't want to do that. Be perfect so okay so there we go those are the four for the signatures perfect so then the rest of this will all go to ephemera which is exciting because that's a good amount to be able to use so then I go ahead and fold these pages space there because we're going to cut that gluey edge off definitely. Hmm. This one needs to be a center signature because I want them to stay together. Three. And then this one, um, I have to measure against the book here to see how much space I have. So if I line this up here. Oops, stand up, friend. Okay, line that up here. <laughs> Why? Why? There we go. Let's not do this a third time. No, <laughs> stop trying to fall over. <sighs> okay, line it up, pull it away. Okay, probably about there to be confident. Yeah, that would be good. Okay, so then we don't need this now. Um, so right here. I guess in the back. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So that will be a lovely spread in the center. Okay. All right. So those will be our four signatures um, for the book. Then these two pages. Going to get used in the book as well. Put that on the outside because 
Let's see. Oh my God. Okay. Okay, so there we go. That's those and the cover done. So I gotta put the little um my little brads in. Where are they? And I'll probably buy more little gold brads and silver brads soon. There's one. Three, four. Okay. Then I need to move these out of the way. So I should tell you before this video becomes a five hour video, one of the other things that's kind of cool about this story, um, and I, I'm going to include this in the book, just this fun story, is. Um, Kind of the history of this story, dear Millie. So on September 28th, 1983, the discovery of a previously unknown tale by Wilhelm Grimm was reported on the front page of the New York Times. After more than 150 years, the Times noted Hansel and Gretel, Snow White, Rumpelstiltskin and Cinderella will be joined by another Grimm fairy tale character. News of the dramatic find made headlines around the world. Now, five years later, we take particular pride in publishing the first edition of Dear Millie. Magnificently illustrated by the preeminent children's book illustrator of this time, of his time, Maurice Sendak. The story of Dear Millie was preserved in a letter Wilhelm Grimm wrote to a little girl in 1816, a letter that remained in her family's possession for over a century and a half. It tells of a mother who sends her daughter into the forest to save her from a terrible war. The child comes upon the hut of an old man who gives her shelter, and she pays his kindness by serving him faithfully for what she thinks are three days, actually 30 years pass. When she finally leaves to return to her mother, the old man hands her a rosebud and says, never fear, when this rose blooms, you will be with me again. As for the pictures that interpret Dear Millie, they are clearly a milestone in Maurice Sendak's career, the work of a master at the height of his powers. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking with the letter, maybe um, I could read it to you as well, but maybe not. I don't know. I, I left it in the basket over here, so I won't get into it. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it in the next video, maybe. Um, I'm thinking with the letter, I might tear it out and like ink it and put it in a pocket instead of use it in a signature I don't know we'll see so the way that I want to do this is to just um score where I want to put these brads and just poke a hole right on through the back here so one there one here I haven't decided what I want to use for end papers for this book yet, but I will figure that out. I'm already pretty much in love with this book. Sometimes the, um, the cover is the funnest part for me <laughs> when I get to do these kind of books. Right there. these brads down really well Last one. Okay. 
here we go. So the brads are in. So I'm probably at the conclusion of a video. So what I'll do um, is just grab the, where are the pages here for this book? Oh, here it is. I was looking for the letter, so I'll conclude this by just reading the letter to you. Um, Dear Millie, I'm sure you have gone walking in the woods or in green meadows and passed a clear flowing brook, and you've tossed a flower into the brook, a red one, a blue one, or a snow white one. It drifted away and you followed it with your eyes as far as you could, and it went quietly away with the little waves farther and farther all day long and all night too by the light of the moon or the stars. It didn't need much light for it knew the way and it didn't get lost. When it had traveled for three days without stopping to rest, another flower came along on another brook. A child like you, but far away from here, had tossed it into a brook at the same time. The two flowers kissed and went their way together and stayed together until they both sank to the bottom. You have also seen a little bird flying away over the mountain in the evening. Perhaps you thought it was going to bed. Not at all. Another little bird was flying over the mountains, and when all was dark on the earth, the two of them met in the last ray of sunshine. The sun shone bright on their feathers, and as they flew back and forth in the light, they told each other many things that we on the earth below could not here. You see, the brooks and the flowers and the birds come together, but people do not. Great mountains and rivers, forests and meadows, cities and villages lie in between. They have their set places and cannot be moved, and humans cannot fly. But one human heart goes out to another, undeterred by what lies between. Thus does my heart go out to you, and though my eyes have seen you yet, it loves you and thinks it is sitting beside you, and you say, tell me a story, and it replies, yes, dear Millie, just listen. So, pretty lovely. Um, so yeah, thank you for hanging out with me while I got started on this book. We made a bit of progress today, and I'm happy. So I will be back, likely, with um, the next video on this um, or another little project that I wanted to do with you. So have a lovely day. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.